Hello friends, this is Carmen. Welcome back to my channel. And today we are out in my patio and we're going to be talking about aloes. And I'll be sharing with you my collection, so stay tuned for that. So I'm going to share with you today my aloe collection. And in my collection I have nine aloes. Um, two of them are the same, so technically eight, I guess, varieties. But they do so well. I am in zone nine here in the United States, in Arizona, and they do really well, have done well out here in my patio. Um, so most of them that I'm going to share with you today are hardy to zones eight, nine, ten, and eleven. They prefer t mild temperatures, but they can definitely stand uh, temperatures in the hundreds like mine have. So I wouldn't worry about that. The main thing is to keep them in the shade, okay? And um, let's start off, let's start off with the oldest one. This is the aloe vera that I have in Mr. Frog here. I've had this planter for a good 15 years. I've taken it with me to every house I own. But this aloe vera here is actually a, I think a fifth generation of the original four inch pot that I purchased. And um, it grew so big that I was able to take many cuttings. And this is one that I brought. And you can see that there are many cuttings inside that I can take from it. So this is best known for its medicinal properties as far as being able to cut the uh, leaf here and using the gel in it for sunburns, for cuts, things like that. So that's why it's probably the best known aloe that most people have easy easy to grow and um, you know you can use it for medicinal purposes too so it's it's a great purpose there the next one I have is this big guy here this is aloe striata or coral aloe and this guy has really grown a lot in the last year it was just a small plant it was actually a bit damaged when it got to me, so had a little bit of trouble growing. Um, I do have another one of it right back here. It's growing in this vintage tin. See, they can grow just about anywhere. In the tin, in the clay pot, terracotta, whatever. So this is the second one of that that I have. I'm thinking that I'm, it's getting big enough that I may transplant it into something else, to an arrangement or something. But these, when uh, they're hit with some sun or have some stress to them, they get a uh, reddish coral edging to them. So that's why they're called the coral aloe. You can see there, there's a lot of new growth to it. And it needs some room. You can see this one's kind of spans over, so um, it does take up some room when it starts to grow. That's the aloe striata. My smallest aloe that I have is this little guy here. This is Aloe Firebird, and it is so cute. I love to use it in uh, miniature gardens or fairy gardens. You see I have it in this one, and then also in my little red wagon I have it. Um, but it's just a cute little plant. Not uh, doesn't take up a lot of space, so it's great for those types of uh, garden dishes, fairy gardens, miniature gardens, and that's aloe firebird. The next one that I have for you here, this is an aloe glauca, and I found this one at Ikea of all places, and it was actually just one little stem. It's grown other stems since then. It does really well out here. It has this really soft green silvery color to it. Rosie wants to get in the picture here. And um, it does well. One thing that I am careful with all of my aloes is overwatering them. If there's one thing that will kill them is too much water. They are drought tolerant plants so they don't need an excessive amount of water. Um, since they are out here on the edge of my balcony they do get some rain so when they get some rain I make sure to skip that watering um, that they're due for 
and the best thing for them is, is rainwater. So this is the aloe glauca here. Right next to it is the aloe Crosby's prolific. And I can see why it's named prolific because it has just grown so many clusters. And the teeth there are just incredible, the little white teeth that it has. Really beautiful plant, aloe Crosby's prolific. Lots of pups that I can take off there. Another very similar one to it here is this aloe brevifolia. Now this one you may remember from a previous um, plant haul that I did from clearance plants. And you probably remember that it had more clusters. What happened to this poor little guy is that it was a clearance plant, but it was overwatered and part of it rotted away. I was able to save these portions of it, but the mother plant did rot. And, um, but these are doing well now. And the teeth on it are really cool. That's one way you can tell Haworthias from aloes is, aloes generally have these teeth on the edges, on the margins of their leaves, and Haworthias don't, in general. So if you're having trouble figuring out if it's an aloe or Haworthia, that's one way to do it. So the last ones that I have to show you, this one here is Aloe Pink Blush. And this one is actually a very slow grower for me. Um, it's not much bigger than it was when I first got it a year ago, but it has given this pup, and even the pup is a slow grower too. But you can see the little pink margins that's where it gets its name, Aloe Pink Blush. So it's great if you want something small um, that's not going to be a fast grower. This is definitely uh, something to look at. Right next to it is one of my newest members to my collection. This is Aloe S Snowstorm. And it's beautiful green with what looks like snowflakes in it so this one came with lots of little pups as you can see and it's just a beautiful beautiful specimen I got this one from leaf and clay another little pup there and it will fill up this container nicely um, not a super fast grower either. This one does well outside and inside, as do most of the ones that I've shown you today. You can easily have them as house plants too. If you give them enough bright, indirect light, they do need some light, not necessarily direct light, but bright, indirect light, so they'll do fine inside. Um, if you live in a region where it gets below 40 in the winter time, I would take them inside. Now here in Phoenix, in zone nine, um, it doesn't get below 42 often, but when it did, this past winter, I covered my outdoor plants with um, a sheet, a bed sheet. You can definitely buy frost sheets at the nursery, but I used a bed sheet and that worked just fine. Now the last one I'm gonna share with you is this one here. This one is aloe partridge breast and this one has instead of a clumping habit to it like some of the other ones this one will grow up and will get taller so it has a real architectural look to it and the coloring on it is just beautiful too but um, wasn't one that I have seen in the nursery so this one also I got from leaf and clay and they arrived bare root but in very very good shape this the two that I got from them didn't have any type of um, wilting or anything like that beautiful beautiful plants and this is aloe partridge breast it's variegated so those are the ones that I have to share with you those are all of them um, some last tips that I wanted to leave with you is um, the one thing that again that will definitely kill these guys is overwatering. So you want to make sure that you don't overwater them or leave them in standing water. 
um, when it's warm mid the summer to uh, spring to summer rather water about once a week that's what I do outside maybe less maybe twice a week if you're having them inside but you always want to make sure that the soil is dry at least two inches down before you water them. In the winter time, fall and winter, you're going to water less. I will probably water it maybe once a month out here. Again, maybe less if you have them inside. But aloes are, again, just a beautiful plant to have in your collections. Um, with over 400 species in that genus, there's lots and lots to choose from, and they're hybriding them all the time. So, um, lots to choose from, whether you want big, small, um, fast grower, slow grower, whatever you want. Okay? Hope you enjoyed that today, friends, my collection. And if you do have um, any questions for me, please do leave them down in the comments below be glad to um, answer them for you. If you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. I do um, put out videos about at least once a week, sometimes more. And, um, you know, we have a great plant community here, so we're always sharing with each other. We'd love to have you here. Thanks so much, friends, for visiting today. Have a blessed day.